I mean, of course, they've had great success in football and, and success in basketball, and they were penalized uh, for football and had to play up, but they were already voluntarily playing up two classifications. Uh, so it's a small school, a single-A school. They were playing 3A, and because of some transfers, uh, they uh, were bumped up to four because they had won a championship. So uh, while uh, they did have a successful season, uh, being the runner-up in their district, being 9-1, and one, losing in overtime, actually, to uh, a much larger school, uh, the perennial champion uh, Thomas Jefferson, uh, they, uh, you know, whether they can sustain that moving forward remains to be seen. Uh, they have uh, kids playing uh, that never get off the field. Uh, when you're going up against a school like TJ and some other larger schools in that four classification, they're playing on one side of the ball and that's it. So uh, that grind throughout the course of the season, I believe, becomes an unfair and potentially a safety risk for, for the kids. So I would hope that when you have discussions this year, those conversations can happen. I know I've had conversations with the coach and with the athletic director and some school board members and folks in the community about how they felt that it was necessary to play up in classification because they wanted to keep rivalries, they wanted to keep the travel low, and then uh, because of some transfers, and, and I've, I've told the city of Aliquippa story before, and it's no different than some of our other urban core, uh, when needs of the family become uh, paramount, uh, you know, oftentimes it's not that traditional family setting. Uh, you have kids coming and going uh, from communities uh, because of a, a familial issue, a single parent issue, uh, an aunt or a grandmother who is raising uh, someone. So uh, those, those uh, things need to be taken into consideration in my judgment. And, and I would hope that that would at least be talked about whether or not you can come to a resolution. And I get it. There are 500 public schools and, and all the public and Catholic schools that are in private and Catholic schools and charter schools are, of course, our public schools that are involved in athletics. Uh, you know, there are, there are a lot of things you have to take into consideration, but I felt it was necessary to at least bring that up again and put that on the record that I would hope that that would at least be discussed and talked about moving forward as you look at the, the transfer rule and revisit it before the next time classifications change. So uh, with that, that, that's really all I had was a statement, uh, Mr. Chairman, and, and again, uh, Mr. Lombardi, if you care to, 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 to say anything, that's fine. But if not, I, I know you and I, uh, for 11 years on this committee, have had great relationship and have always had an open door policy. So uh, I just felt it necessary to put it on the record. So thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Uh, Representative Matsey, uh, you're right uh, about the 11 year relationship. Thank you. I, I can't thank you enough and for the respect and the ability to pick up the phone and speak to you anytime. I think you bring up a, a very interesting situation, especially the school in question was a play away from being in a state semifinal in, in 4A. So there is a competitive piece to it. So I think that has to be looked at. And this summer, we are going to kick the tires again and review the whole, whole piece of the postseason part and the competition formula of the transfer rule for this reason. We want to fish for sharks. We don't intend to catch dolphins. So with that being said, I, I thank you for your kind remarks. And uh, we will we will review this this summer. Thank you.